Christ taught us to care for the least among us. He asks us to bring His love and compassion into the world. One of the ways we do this is by actively participating in public life and using the values of our faith to shape our decisions. In their statement on faithful citizenship, the U.S. bishops tell us that for Catholics, participation in political life is not optional. It's vital, it's necessary, it's an important way to live our faith. As faithful citizens, we can engage politicians in bringing that moral vision to supporting the unborn, to being aware of issues of food for all, housing, health care, the plight of immigrants. We need Catholics to be engaged not only in lobbying and in advocating, but also in running for public office and therefore bringing their values to bear in the public square. Faithful citizenship means being engaged, making a difference. It means voting based on a well-formed conscience. It means running for political office in light of moral and ethical principles. It means urging lawmakers to make sound moral decisions. It means acting in support of the unborn, the poor, the immigrants, the family, and God's creation. These actions are ways to live out our faith, putting Catholic moral principles into practice, supporting public policies that protect human life and dignity and promote the common good. Certainly the common good includes the respect for the individual, the rights of each person, the dignity of each person, uh, but the common good also means going beyond our narrow concerns, our selfish interests, and looking toward the good of the whole, of all society, uh, creating those conditions uh, in which human beings can flourish and become the persons that God called them to be. Our faith challenges us to view politics through the life and teaching of Jesus Christ and to form our consciences so we can make sound moral choices in public life. We can help to form our conscience by listening carefully to the scriptures, by listening carefully to what the church teaches us about the scriptures, by reflecting in a prayerful way on the scriptures and the church's teaching by engaging in um, a conversation with various people in education who can all help us to get a better understanding of what it is that the Lord is asking of us now and how we respond to present realities. Faithful citizenship flows from our baptism. It's a requirement of our faith, so it is not optional. We are called to defend human life, to promote human dignity, to work for justice and peace in all aspects of our life. The church's teaching does not fit conveniently into the platform of either one of the parties. We may find ourselves feeling like we don't have a political home, some raise questions about the role of the church in political life. Should we mix religion and politics? What about the separation of church and state? Our faith teaches us that we do have a moral obligation to involve ourselves in political activities. Not all of us to do it the same way. Each of us should figure out the best way we can do it based on our circumstances in life. But we ought not be afraid to do it. We ought not be scared away by separation of church and state. Because the truth of it is, we have every right to be involved, and we enrich the process when we bring our perspective to it. In their statement on faithful citizenship, the bishops of the United States explain their role in political life. The bishops do not endorse any party or any candidate. What we try to do as shepherds of our people is to for help them form their consciences, to form their consciences correctly, and to tell them that we can't be Catholics just on Sunday. We have to be Catholics Monday uh, through, through Saturday. The bishops explain that responsible citizenship is a virtue, and participation in the political process is a moral obligation. Our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, has taught about love and charity as motivating forces in the way we live. Our actions in political life for the good of others, he says, may be viewed as social charity. 
For example, in California, Catholics practice social charity by coming together for a lobby day in the state capitol. They meet with their legislators and speak for the unborn, the poor, the vulnerable, and the voiceless. We're here in the halls of power to speak for those who have no power. We're here because we are a people of faith that understand Catholic social teaching, that are basically going to be concerned about the poor, concerned about the unborn, concerned about immigrants, uh, concerned about health care and affordable housing, and many other issues. But why should we do so much? Why not leave politics to the politicians and focus on our own lives? Why is voting and speaking out on issues so important? Well, the greatest commandment is to love God, to love our neighbor, and we have the example of Christ who, who really was the Good Samaritan, and we are, we, we are told from the first pages of Scripture that we are indeed our brother's keepers. We believe that every human being is made in God's image. It does not matter whether that person is uh, from one country or another. It doesn't matter what language the person speaks. Every person is created in God's image, and every person is uh, given an immortal soul by God. And that's the dignity of the human person. Because all human life is sacred, there are some things we can never support in good conscience. They are intrinsically evil. They are always wrong, always a violation of human life and dignity. Abortion is a key example. This is why the bishops have said that today, abortion and euthanasia have become preeminent issues in our society. These and other issues involving intrinsic evil have a particular claim on our consciences and our actions. Intrinsic evil is something that is always and everywhere wrong. One clear example is abortion. There is no way that we say abortion is correct or right in any circumstance. Another example which people might not think about is racism. In no way, in shape or form, is racism ever right. Opposing what is intrinsically evil also leads us to what we should support, such as efforts to reduce poverty and build peace. The basic principle that the bishops want to put across is that all life is sacred from the moment of conception to our death. There are other issues that concern us because they have to do with life as well, like health issues, immigration issues, housing issues, nutrition issues, all of these things are important for the sustenance and the respect of life. We should seek the common good and act in solidarity with those in need, working to reduce poverty and hunger, promoting peace and protecting God's creation. We can make different choices about the best ways to achieve these goals, but we cannot ignore them or our responsibility to help advance them. As we make political choices, Faithful Citizenship challenges us to ask different questions, not just about whether we're better off, not just about our own interests, but about the well-being of all. How can we build a society that protects human life by ending abortion and other direct threats to life? How can we care for God's creation? Christ had a concern for the poor. How do we as Catholics bring that same concern to our world in the areas of quality health care, food, clothing, and housing for the poor today? How can our society promote the central institution of marriage? How can we work together to resist unjust war and conflict and create a more peaceful world? How do we become engaged in global solidarity? And how do we overcome the culture of violence that we have in our society today? How can we promote the dignity of work? How can our society better support families in their moral responsibilities? Faithful citizenship calls for a new kind of politics, one focused more on moral principles than on the latest polls, more on the needs of the weak than the influence of the strong, more on the common good than the temptations of self-interest. When we say the Our Father, we pray, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. We are an essential part of helping to build God's kingdom on earth. And it will never come without the participation of people of faith acting on their moral convictions to build a better world. It will come only if we answer the call to faithful citizenship.